and we were kind of starting to lose our, mar- our marbles <laughs> a little bit. We're just like, is any of this good? We've written so many songs. We've written like, a like, nine-minute you know? <laughs> song. Is it any good? And there were- when are we doing? Welcome from Arcade Fire. How are you doing? Hi. We're not on Zoom anymore. <laughs> Thank God for that. Yeah, I know. We're going to talk about your record. Um, we. I love this record. I really do Thank absolutely you. love it. And I absolutely um, insist everyone goes and gets it. When we <clears throat> um, caught up a while back, I remember you saying that you were really interested in the idea in songwriting that you could say to someone, but how does it go? Mm-hmm. And suddenly you've got, you've got the hook and you've got, and it's really easy to kind of like absorb that. And when I was watching the footage back of Coachella, when you did uh, Look Out Kid, the, the, the audience instantly did it back. How did that feel like sort of with the new material? Like the first time we played Wake Up, people looked at us like, why are you doing this to us a little bit? Like, cause our, <laughs> our audience at that time, we, it was like a little bit more folky what we were doing. And we played the, like the loudest song that anyone had ever heard. And they were, <laughs> you know, it's like, cause that's it. when people are like, you guys changed your sound so much on Reflector. I'm like, no, we changed our sound so much on Funeral. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> like, you know, we've changed our sound a lot over the years. So um, I've never seen an audience, like a big audience like that, who doesn't know a song at all, immediately get it. That was actually a really, really cool moment. It felt like it, what you, would, you could achieve in a small show, in a small room, where, where you address a small room and, and you would say, everybody, let's sing together. But it, it felt like that, but in a giant space. Yeah. So it was like the the intimacy of a small room in a giant outdoor space was really special. It's like very easy to get caught up in the idea of like coolness and and wanting to be liked and you know it's like you can, you can kind of I think on this record, uh, particularly on Lookout Kid, like it's very difficult to express a sentiment that's actually kind of heartfelt and not have it be cheesy and mm-hmm. just really just say something direct. And in a lot of ways, to me, that's the biggest challenge as a songwriter is to not not like chicken out and actually try to say what you mean, even if you know that someone's going to make fun of you for it or going to or you know what I mean? It's like because because people are it's a very kind of cruel and hypercritical world out there. Like everyone's a critic on planet Earth. All of us, we've all become just like critics so armchair critics so but that's why it felt doubly important just to actually just to just to be like heartfelt and not to be at all embarrassed about it and father john misty i read came out as well he could good pals father john misty yeah Yeah. which i i still don't understand why he agreed to do it it was like peak covid hopped on a plane from la um it was cool i mean it was we hadn't really seen anyone other than our engineer and we were kind of starting to lose our, mar- our marbles a little bit. <laughs> We're just like, is any of this good? We've written so many songs, We've like, a like nine you know, minute song. <laughs> is it any good? And there, were, and there was no like, we had nothing. We weren't able to make any plans. We were trying to get the band back together, but we had no. Mm-hmm. There was no like foreseeable future in which it was going to happen. And we we're like, we have to. Someone has to hear this stuff. We need, you know. So it was it was really beautiful um, for him to come and. And join us. He stayed stayed for like almost a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. Nice to have that soundboard. And his new record's amazing as if well. If he ever allows us to release it, we recorded <laughs> oh <my> an <laughs> absolutely <laughs> hilariously. Is it, still good? is it still good? It's a little bit dated now. <laughs> no, it's a little bit dated. But Regina and I uh, <laughs> produced it, and it is produced it. It's not a thing. <laughs> It is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, Father John Misty song. It's oh the funniest gosh. song I've ever heard on planet Earth. So no pressure. That's Josh, a good tease because now I know what it Josh is. Josh Tillman, if you're listening to this, <laughs> being a dog needs to be released. <laughs> being a dog, record store day. Being a release. dog is a pretty good job. That's the first lyric. That, I, I, this needs to happen. That's the teaser. <laughs> Being a dog is a pretty good job. Well, yeah. <laughs> this, this has got hit written all over it. It's, I have a feeling for some of the, it's, this, is, this one's a hit. I There's some pretty you. dated Trump references in it now that I mentioned. Now that it, it would have been more timely two years ago when we made it. But. <laughs> I look forward to hearing it. Maybe, maybe yeah. one day. How does it work with Nigel Godrich on this particular project? He's just such an incredible engineer. Like he comes from this amazing 
British tradition of like kind of BBC engineers mm-hmm. that kind of goes back to the Beatles and before. And it's like people who have kind of learned the, in that way and have kind of done all the steps. It's not really a thing anymore, particularly in the age of computer recording. Like sure. everyone can record themselves. And, you know, so it was really luxurious to have someone who's so um, deeply knowledgeable about recording. Yeah, And just yeah. to have a fresh set of ears. Sure. Because, like I said, Regina and I were alone a lot and and really, like, you know, working and working and working and working. And sometimes you're just like, wait, is any of this good? <laughs> um, you know, we'd, we'd done, like, Rabbit Hole it pretty close to what it is now. And we we sent that to him and a bunch of other songs. And, and we sent it to Jeff Barrow. Mm-hmm. And they both were like, that's a banger. You know, yeah, like, they're yeah. both like, that's a really cool song. So you know that's good feedback yeah yeah take yeah. that one yeah, we've been to nigel's one. studio in london incredible mm-hmm. i did an interview in there and i walked Holy in and i was like crap. oh it's my in- god it's incredible it's like the dream studio it's a like hallowed space yeah. right you just walk in you can actually hear on the on we on the last song there's the sound of these trains um yeah like kind of futuristic trains because the studio is under the train track mm-hmm. so the trains pass over your head and it's yeah. such a bizarre, like you'll you'd be working here this zzz, 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 <laughs> sound, and I was like, this is such a cool sound. We should put this on the record. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. It really is amazing. Yeah. What's next for you guys after this? Have you got? Has any sort of ideas come out of these writing sessions that you want to explore sonically? Further? So much, oh, like so an overwhelming many songs. amount. I can't wait. I have too many songs in my head. Not it's... enough time. Too many songs. Oh. We we're we're playing SNL, which is. It's the one show that's truly live, mm-hmm. so it's like this is Saturday Night Live. Saturday right? Night Live. Yeah. I mean, it's live, so it's like yeah. you kind of when the light turns on, you're on. You better be good. <laughs> Do you still get nervous with that? It's you know, it's a it's it it's kind of like this. There's no vibe, but on the other side of that camera, there's like a couple million people. Yeah, and so it's like it kind of it's kind of hard to like sure. get your head around it a little bit. I mean, I guess like. I mean, the most overwhelmed I've ever been is playing Glastonbury because headlining Glastonbury, you feel like you're playing to the population of Earth in medieval times. It's like it feels like it's everyone. Right. Okay, yeah. And then you remember that on the TV, it's like way more. Yeah. It's like yeah. So oh, yeah. Many, it's huge. It's huge. Yeah, it's massive. And that's like that's the biggest gig. I mean, that's really like because that combo is so rare where it's like it's yeah. on normal television and yeah. all fr- in front and of, a, in sea front of, of a sea of people yeah. so like that's you know that's definitely like that's a big gig it's a special place yeah yeah saturday night Live. I, I can't even begin to think how stressful that is because even like in the studio is the sound really dead as well is it are you sort of all doing it in in ears and it kind of sounds dead i mean i still can't do in ears because i it doesn't work for me but it, mm-hmm. like uh it's you know yeah it's a it's it's always a little bit dead but i mean luckily we've we kind of make the cast is always really cool we're always like kind of like like everyone who works there is like pretty amazing and so it's like you know you you always have a vibe with the cast yeah. i bet it's like the dream team behind the scenes isn't it on oh, the writers like i mean they're all it's just like what a amazingly smart bunch of people what venue is on your bucket list to play are there any left you know i'd love to play on the moon one day if elon ever emails me back <laughs> yeah elon make it happen <laughs> Arcade Fire on the Moon. I'm just putting it out there. I really want to play the Acropolis. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. That would be cool.